Hello, Internet viewer. During my last solo playthrough of Pichu, I often had to resort to the scumbag strategy of double team and pray to get through the latter half of the game. Mainly because everyone in your mom knows Earthquake at that point. Thanks to double team working its magic and seismic toss, yes, you heard me right, we were able to take over Kanto. But what if that sissy boy strategy wasn't available to me? Well, as you've read from the title, we're gonna tackle this, pun not intended, with a Pokemon that can't learn double team. Caterpie. This Pokemon can only learn tackle, string shot, and... Oh. Uh, that's it. I only have two attacking moves to work with, and neither one of them are stab. At least Weedle gets a stab. But there's already a few Weedle runs out there, and I don't want to be a copycat. So today, we'll see if it is possible to defeat Pokemon Fire Red, only using a Caterpie in battle. A quick run down the rules that I'm sure most of you will skip anyway. No game exploding glitches, no items in battle besides held items, any HM slaves needed to progress in the game will remain knocked out in my party. And no outside help. I hate to keep bugging you with the rules, but I'm sure someone will pest me about it if I don't. First, I modified the start Pokemon from Squirtle to Caterpie, the only hacking I'll do in this entire playthrough. Next, I constantly soft reset the game until I get a nature I'm happy with, either Adamant or Jolly. After a couple dozen resets, I do eventually get the Adamant nature, and thus, Hogan is born. My first battle is against my rival, who I lazily named Bob, and his Bulbasaur. I was debating giving my rival a Charmander, but I'm 143 and two thirds percent sure that I would have no chance of winning. Our first encounter isn't special. We just tackle each other until one of us faints. Thanks to a miss on his end, I was able to nab the victory. This battle doesn't really matter, but the extra money is nice. Now it's on to every solo runner's favorite part. Grind your Pokemon's level so high that it can one-shot everything. The only thing I need to be aware of is my EV distribution. Thankfully, Route 1 is a smorgasbord of speed EVs, which is definitely one of the stats I want to invest in, with the majority of the others going to my attack and HP. So I can, in theory, take a hit. And attack so I can hopefully do some decent damage. After exterminating all the Pidgeys and Rotatas on Route 1 and maxing our speed stat, we are ready for the first gym. The first thing I do before facing Brock is waste all my PP. I mentioned I only have two attacking moves to work with. The first is Tackle, the second is Struggle. Oddly enough, in most situations, I'm better off going in using Struggle. Firstly, Struggle is a typeless type move, so I don't have to worry about any resistances. Secondly, Struggle is actually stronger than Tackle in most situations. In Generation 3, Tackle has a base power of 35 and an accuracy of 95, while Struggle has a base power of 50 and an accuracy of 100. The only real drawback of Struggle is the recoil damage, which is about a fourth of the damage dealt. So, if I deal 20 points of damage, I'll lose 5 HP from recoil damage. Even if I had the Silk Scarf, which raises the attack power of normal type moves by 10%, Struggle would still be stronger. With all my PP depleted, we are ready for Brock. Geodude does go down easy, but his Onyx knows Rock Tomb that not only hits me for a good chunk of damage, but lowers my speed. Even with my level being almost double of his Onyx, a pair of Rock Tombs takes me out. I am, however, able to beat Brock in my second attempt thanks to a miss from Rock Tomb and a critical hit. I rush through Mount Moon, grab the Dome Fossil because Renegade for life, and face my rival again. This time, losing isn't an option. He starts with Pidgeotto, which knows Gust and Sand Attack. While Gust does do decent damage to me, Sand Attack is the real issue. Raticate and Abra go down a couple of hits, but the misses start piling up when Bulbasaur comes out. It can't hit me very hard thanks to my type advantage, but it gave me a lethal dose of Sleep Powder and Leech Seed. Between the chip damage and the misses, I again lose on my first try. On my next attempt, I go in with the struggle strategy. While it does hit harder, my HP doesn't last very long. By the time I take down Pidgeotto, 
I'm already under half health. And while Rattata and Abra do go down in one shot, by the time Bulbasaur comes back out, I don't have enough HP to take him down. My next attempt doesn't go as well either, as I get bombarded with critical hits. But a couple of attempts later, I get the luck I need to defeat my rival. After battling all the trainers to raise my level a bit, I go after Misty. Her starry was easy. It wastes a turn to using Harden, which I take down after two attacks. Her starmie knows Water Pulse, which is a two-hit KO against me. Not only that, there's a chance for confusion, if it wasn't for Compound Eyes. Tackle sadly doesn't do enough for me to take it out before it can take me out, and Struggle doesn't fare much better. Considering the sad power gap, I put Misty on hold and headed for the SSN to face my rival again. It was close, but I'm barely able to grab the win, living with only 2 HP. Back to Misty. It still took me a few tries, but I do manage to win after a couple of struggles. I make a beeline for Lieutenant Surge. I don't even bother with tackle and go right in with struggle. Voltorb goes down 2. 3 if you consider the healing. Pikachu goes down 1, but not before Static takes effect. Raichu looks like it's going to be a 3 hit KO, but at this point, my health is so low that I don't have enough to take it out. It ends up taking me out with Shockwave. After a bit more grinding and equipping a Cherry Berry in case I get Static again, which I do, Hogan hulks up and takes out Raichu in one hit thanks to a crit. With Lieutenant out of the way, we can move on to Rock Tunnel. And this part was just as challenging as any gym. Most of the trainers here have Rock type Pokemon, which Hogan here does not like, brother. So I try to avoid as many trainers as possible, but I wiped here at least a good half dozen times trying to get through this cave. I go on to face Giovanni for the first time next. Considering he has two Rock types, I don't even bother trying to attack and go right in with struggle. Sadly, his Onyx knows Rock Throw, which hits hard, as you can imagine. By the time he sends out Kangaskhan, I don't have enough health to take it out, and end up taking myself out with Recoil. It takes a few tries, but I am able to defeat him with just a sliver of HP. I try my luck against Erika next, but I soon give up when I realize by the time I take out her Victory Bell, I only have about a third of my health left. I put her on hold, thinking I have a better chance against my rival. I was wrong. Between Sand Attack from Pidgeotto causing all my attacks to miss, and a double dose of Intimidate from Growlithe and Gyarados, since all two of my attacks are physical, I hit as well as hard as a single peanut. Even worse, his Ivy Storm of Sleep Powder, and Cadaver knows Disable, leaving me unable to attack if I still have PP remaining. I keep throwing myself into this battle over and over again, until I get a crit on his Ivy Storm which takes it out in one shot. Thank god for that, because I did not have the HP to tank an attack. Once that's out of the way, I struggle my way to the top of the Pokemon Tower, and this area is why I didn't tempt this run in the original Red and Blue games. In Gen 1, Struggles is his normal type move, whereas every generation afterwards, it's typeless. As most of you know by now, ghosts aren't affected by normal type attacks. So, in the original games, this would have been a dead end. Pun not intended. Anyways, I kick out Team Rocket, save Mr. Fuji, grab the item finder from one of Oak's aides, wake up a grumpy Snorlax, and then run away like a little sissy boy. And finally, I use that item finder I grabbed to pick up the leftovers it was sleeping on. Yeah, it's weird, with some hidden items all I need to do is walk up to it and press A, while other ones, like the leftovers for example, you need the item finder to obtain it. With leftovers in hand, I am ready for my rematch of Erika, and it goes a lot smoother. If it wasn't for leftovers, I'm sure this would've been much, much harder because I do get paralyzed. A lot. I enter a huge stalemate with Tangela due to me being unable to attack, and Tangela hitting me with all the strength of a light breeze. And thanks to a lucky critical hit on Viaplume, it goes down without an issue. With all the confidence in the world, I move on to Koga, only for it to shatter when coughing blows up in my face. And while I do live the kamikaze attack, I go down to his muck. After a small handful of attempts, and being able to get past his muck, I backtrack to Saffron City to evict Teen Rocket out of Silco, 
which in turn helps me grind up my level a bit. Things were going pretty well, until my rival showed up. He leaves with Pidgeot, which hits hard with Wing Attack. I barely managed to take it, but his next Pokemon, Growlithe, not only lowers my attack with Intimidate, but annihilates me with Flame Wheel. Knowing I have no chance of getting past this dangerous duel right now, I tuck my tail between my legs and run back to Koga. I then proceed to throw myself into this battle over and over again until I finally get the outcome I need, which is a lot easier said than done. He has a habit of using smokescreen, which gives me the accuracy of a stormtrooper, and Toxate makes my leftovers next to useless. But with no other option, I keep pressing on until I nab the win. As you can see from my level, I was at this for a while. Now back to Bob. You know, for a move that's supposed to have 95% accuracy, I seem to be missing a lot. And I don't even have sand in my eyes this time. With those constant misses, I lose my first couple of attempts. I got some good luck a couple of attempts later, but then I'm getting hit with the dose of sleep powder again, which puts me out for a while. I managed to wake up before it takes me out, but it was starting to get really close. But thanks to another lucky critical hit, I do manage to get the job done. Actually, I got quite a few critical hits in this battle. I guess to make up for all the misses I conjured up. After depleting all my PP again, I faced Giovanni for the second time. And he must have been on something when I faced him this time around, because the only thing he did was lower my defense with Tail Whip and didn't do a whole lot in the attacking department. Not only that, I managed to avoid Poison Point from the Needle Twins and beat on my first try. Hey, I'll take the easy victory. Sabrina isn't that much harder, to be honest. The only thing I had to be careful of was her Mr. Mind Baton passing stat boost to her Alakazam. Other than that, I easily obtained my sixth badge. And now it's time for the battle I've been dreading this entire run. Blaine. He leads with Growlithe. Intimidate lowers my pitiful attack and uses Fire Blast aiming at my even less impressive special defense. I have to bank on Fire Blast missing a few times. With Fire Blast having the accuracy of 85, it's not impossible, but it is tedious. It's made even worse when my tackles, which have a base accuracy of 95, seem to be missing 10 times more than his Fire Blast. Someone does not want me getting past this. I do manage to get to his Arcanine in a couple of attempts, but even with struggle, I barely leave a dent in it. I have no choice but to ground to level 100 and hope for the best. But even at the highest level, if things don't go a certain way, I am not winning. First, I need a max roll to take out Growlithe in one shot. If he lives and Fire Blast hits me, he'll heal and I'll just knock myself out from recoil damage. Then, I need a crit on either his Ponyta or Rapidash. And whichever one doesn't get the crit, I have to cross my fingers and pray that Fire Blast misses, or that he uses Fire Spin. I also need him to use all his healing items on either of his ponies. I actually recover a bit more damage with Leftovers than I actually take with Recoil Damage. If he wastes his items here, I won't have to worry about Blaine using them on his Arcanine. Finally, his Arcanine cannot hit me. It'll one-shot me with Fire Blast, even at near full health. And I don't mean just miss me once. If I do not get a crit, Struggle is a 5 hit KO. And I don't think I can tell you what the odds of him missing 5 times in a row are. I got lucky in one run where he misses 3 times, but close doesn't cut it. But with all that, I felt like I had a chance of winning. A very slim chance mind you, but I was determined. After I'm not kidding you, almost two days worth of battles and countless soft resets, I finally got the luck I needed. Thanks to an early crit and a miss, I managed to take out Blaine's Arcanine in two hits. I thought for sure this is where the run was going to end. So anything past this is a bonus to me. After a quick vacation to the Sevi Islands, because Arceus knows I need that, I head back to Vermilion for one last showdown with Giovanni. And let me tell you something, brother. We ran wild on him. Seriously, 
Hogan must have hulked up or something because we murdered him on our first try. We got a ton of critical hits. And he was wasting turns by lowering my speed instead of doing something useful like, I don't know, attack me. We easily get our 8th gym badge and we are ready for the Elite Four. After one last showdown with our rival. And right at the start, we run into problems. His Pidgeon knows Feather Dance, which sharply loads my attack. Or it'll just hit me with Wing Attack. Wing Attack actually isn't hit as hard as I thought it would, but I cannot afford to have my attack lowered already more than it will be. If he leads with Feather Dance, I don't even try. Next up is Rhyhorn. I just gotta hope that Rock Blast misses me enough times I can recover a little bit of HP. With Growlithe, he'll have to use Flame Wheel, which I can barely take, or Agility. With my attack lowered by a stage, I cross my fingers and pray that he uses agility instead of attacking me. Then with Gyarados, I need Hydro Pump to miss me a couple of times. I can tank a hit if I need to, but I'd rather not. If I can crit it, that would be the best scenario. With Alakazam, he'll either set up Calm Mind, then attack with Psychic, which will blow me away, or he'll use Future Sight. Or occasionally he might use the Sable. But since struggle cannot be disabled, it's a free turn. But if I get past all that, I still need to deal with his Venusaur. With my attack lower, I barely leave a dent in it. The only attacking move it seems to know is Razor Leaf. But if I get its HP down to about half, it'll just use Synthesis to heal up. Even worse, it knows Growth. And once that gets going, it'll hit like a tank. I need a critical hit to even stand a chance of winning. This battle takes almost as long as my bout with Blaine did, but with enough luck, I do beat my rival. Now with the warm up out of the way, me and my little friend are ready for the Elite Four. First up is Lorelei. First out is Dugon. Both of his attacking moves hit hard and have 100% accuracy. I need a crit to get past it, but even if I do, I quickly realize there is absolutely no way I'm getting past her. Firstly, her team is bulky, which doesn't work in my favor. Secondly, while I can bake on AI stupidity from time to time, at this point, they're not going to do completely ridiculous stuff like try to confuse me like I'm already confused. Thirdly, I have no way of taking out her Lapras even if I make it to it. Hypothetically speaking, even if I got the luckiest run in the world and made it all the way to her Lapras, this is what her Lapras knows. All her moves are 100% accuracy, and they will hit hard. Here's an example. Her Dugon, even with critical hits, is still a 3-hit KO. Lapras is even bulkier than Dugon. I have absolutely zero chance of taking her Lapras out before it can take me out. While it's sad that we can barely scratch the surface of the Elite Four, I am proud of how far we got. I thought for sure Blade was going to be the death of us. But making it all the way to Elite Four? I say this is a win for Hogan, brother. At least I did better than Bongzilla, brother. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like what you saw and want to help support me, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to follow me on social media, you can follow me on Twitter using the link in the description below. And with all that being said, I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye.